Okay, so it is 7.33 p.m. on Tuesday, December 6, 2022. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. Well, I'd first like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present um, from members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Roger DuPont? Here. Patrick Hanlon? Here. Venkat Holly? Here. And uh, Daniel Riccadelli? Here. Great to have you all. Ms. Hoffman is off tonight. Um, <clears throat> on behalf of the town, uh, Rick Valorelli, the board's administrator. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Rick. And assisting us, um, as always, is uh, Vincent Lee. Here. And great to have you with us as well. Um, then a appearing on behalf of 160 Wollaston Avenue. Um, Casina Ovavori, uh, are you here? Yeah. Hello, good to have you. Uh, and appearing on behalf of 320 Appleton Street, uh, Jennifer Condon and Jim Jordan. Uh, I'm their architect. I know they're trying to log in right now. Hopefully they'll be with us in a minute or two. Perfect, no, no rush, but yep. glad you're here. Thank you. <clears throat> So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2023 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded, so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted, and the public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. So going to our agenda, um, item number two, uh, the approval of meeting minutes uh, from our November 22nd meeting. Uh, starting this meeting with an administrative item as this relates to the board and as such will be conducted without input from the general public. The board will not take up any new business on prior hearings, nor will there be introduction of any new information on matters previously brought before the board. So item number two is the approval of the meeting minutes from November 22nd, 2022. These were minutes that were drafted up uh, by Mr. Valorelli and distributed to the board um, for questions and comments. And uh, I know that some of those came back in. Are there any further questions or comments in regards to the meeting minutes for November 22nd? Seeing none. Um, I would ask for a motion to approve the written minutes from November 22nd, 2022. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. 
So roll call vote of the board on the approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Those meetings. Minutes Mr. Mr. Approved. Yes, Mr. Sorry. Hanlon. No, I, I I noticed that you skipped over Mr. Dupont, but I think I know why. Yes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Dupont. Couldn't get in. <laughs> uh, this brings us to item number three on our agenda this evening. Uh, now turning to the public hearings on tonight's agenda, here are some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicants to introduce themselves or themselves and to make their presentation to the board. I will then request that the members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. And after the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. And at the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. So with that, uh, item number three on our agenda this evening is docket number 3725, 160 Wollaston Avenue. So I would ask the applicant to, to introduce himself, and I will go ahead and bring up the application on the screen. Hi. So good my evening. Name, good evening. Um, my name is Cassiana, and um, here with me is my wife, Ajan. Um, we are the um, homeowners for 160 Wollaston, and our architect, Nicholas Preston, is also on the um, he's also joining us um, remotely as well, but um, he cannot join with audio. So, um, but there's something with his audio, but we might defer to him if anything comes up mm -hmm. that we cannot address ourselves. Um, so, so um, with that, um, yeah. So, do you want me to um, talk about? Yeah, if you could just to tell us a little bit about what you're planning to do, what you'd like to be able to do. Okay, so. Um, what we are seeing right now is the plan um, for a um, new construction single family residence. Um, the entire plan has been approved um, by right. Um, but um, we are here today to request for a special permit to um, enclose the basement egress. So, um, which is um, yeah, the stairs leading from the basement to the back of the property um, as highlighted by the mouse cursor. Um, so um, the reason why I'm requesting special permit is because um, the stairs is going to project into the um, minimum setback at the rear part of the building. And um, so according to our understanding of the bylaws, um, in order to enclose the stairs, um, we need a special permit for that because we are looking to build um, something like a doghouse um, covering over those stairs. Um, that's, yeah, that's what we're here for. All right, thank you. Um, so it just you know focused in it's this portion here, which extends the this dashed line, I believe is the uh, the rear setback line. So this would be a new construction in in the rear yard, yes. which typically is is not allowed, but in this case, because um, of section five point three point nine uh, a in our bylaws, um, it is being proposed as uh, an enclosed entrance in a setback. And that's the reason that they're requesting a special permit and coming before us this evening. Um, and, and you had said that the, your architect is, uh, is um, unable to, doesn't have a, an audio line to the meeting this evening, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, just to go through the the drawing set here, this would be the extension of the foundation to include that. Um, the plan of the first floor showing where that stair is. Um, and then this is the for floors, uh, front elevation. I believe this is the rear elevation without it. That's right. Showing the, uh, uh, the bulkhead here. Um, and then this is the proposal this would be to add this feature. Um, so the, and then this is the site plan. So the, the I had posed a question um, to Mr. Valarelli uh, earlier this week uh, and the last week um, about the question about usable open space on the property. Um, so usable open space is a way that the, uh, one of the ways that 
one of the requirements the town has for uh, residential property and it's to it's basically a percentage of the gross floor area of the house has to be provided as open space outside the the building and open to the sky and relatively flat and is basically to provide um, outdoor recreation space and where this is a new dwelling and the parking is at level is at level um, the bylaw allows the the minimum dimension for kind of qualifying as usable open space to be 20 feet by 20 feet and so i believe the rear yard is currently counted as usable open space and um, the reason I, I, so this is new construction um, and on the table that was provided by the surveyor under op usable open space, um, it's listed as being non-conforming and showing zero usable open space, which I think is incorrect because certainly the building department would not have issued uh, a permit for the construction of the property if it had no usable open space on the back. Um, and I did get, where did I put the, how did I say, I know Mr. Valerelli, I believe you had sent me an email with some additional information, which I thought I saved here, and now I can't find it. Uh, maybe, oh, that's why, because it's a different file format. Um, let me see if I can switch to it real quick. Let's see, share. Uh, so it's this sketch here. Um, and so, uh, Mr. Valerio, if you could just make sure I'm, you know, reading this properly. The usable open space currently uh, in this rear yard, it's an area that's 21.9 feet by 61.77 feet for a total of 1353. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. So that equated to 33% usable open space. We're only looking for 30%. Okay. However, um, uh, because they plan on enclosing uh, the once open stairway leading to the basement, uh, it, it, there's a, um, it, it, it's a different story. So it, it changes the complexion of the usable open space. And in fact, uh, it would probably not qualify. So they would. They could possibly count the areas to the left and the right of the proposed basement access, but would they? But they would not be able to count the area directly behind it. Would that be? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Chairman, but oh, please. Uh, because there's a structure now enclosing the basement stairs, it interrupts the open space at 21.9 by 61.77. Uh, again, came to about 33 percent. So okay. now we have just a one small patch, a take your pick, either left or right, whatever's bigger, whatever one you pick uh, does not uh, does not qualify for useful open space. It's not enough. They needed that entire backyard. They needed that uh, stairway to the basement unenclosed in order to be counted as useful open space. Okay. So I it looks like the proposed Enclosure for the stairs is five foot eight, um, which is 5.67. So that would leave 56.1 feet divided into two parts. Um, and if we multiply that by 21.9, we're at 1,228. Um, Back to the, oops. And if I go back now to, general information on this property, what is ours? It's 4679. So that would be down to 26% of the, usable open space after with the addition of that part out back. Um, so if I'm, so Mr. Valerelli, so, to, so that being the case where the, the house currently complies in regards to usable open space, but if 
this um, structure over the stair was added, it would no longer qualify for usable open space. So that would be a new non-conformity. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. I spoke to the inspector who actually wrote this permit. Yeah. Uh, that was the condition of the permit being released as those stairs would remain open. Okay. Unless the, uh, the board found otherwise. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the application. Um, ask if there are uh, questions from the board. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I noticed that in the planning department memorandum, there was a suggestion that because of the amount of the additional uh, gross floor area, that uh, this should uh, be treated as a large addition in addition to everything else that they said. Um, and I seem to remember that that is, at least as I understand the rationale for it, uh, it's inconsistent with this board's decision in 21 Hutchinson Road and uh, what was there then indicated as a longstanding interpretation of the um, of the inspectional services department. And I wondered if uh, Mr. Valarelli could indicate whether or not there's some reason why this, why, uh, well, could, could we state what the, uh, position of the department is and whether it agrees with the notion that the provision on uh, large additions would apply uh, in this case when you have a new when you have a demolition and a new construction uh, good question mr Hammond. so again i did not do the plan review for this this particular job uh, you would have to take what was what was rebuilt on the existing foundation and then take what was added. If the addition to the existing foundation exceeded 750 square feet, then they would need a special permit for large addition. So everything within the existing foundation would be okay. Uh, it all depends how much they added to the uh, original foundation and is it in excess of 750 square feet? I don't have those numbers in front of me. It was, is. Mr. Chairman, if I could Please. just follow up on that. Um, could, could you explain a little bit more about my understanding of this project is that they did not attempt to build on the existing foundation, or at least that isn't something they were relying on, that they just totally demolished the old building so that there's no alteration in the old building that took place because the old building isn't there anymore. Um, is that a misunderstanding of what the issue is? I'm not quite sure I understand why it is that the foundation of the old building is relevant if uh, the old building has been completely demolished. Uh, Mr. Hanlon, if that is the case and this house was completely demolished, then a large addition special permit would not be necessary. Okay, so as a matter of fact, I wonder if the applicant could explain yeah, so whether what actually happened has the old house actually been completely demolished or not? Yes, the old house was completely demolished and then we got the full permit for the new building. It's a totally new building. Everything is gone. We're reusing nothing from the old house. So even the proper the um plan, the last plan you put up that was used to sort of figure out the usable open space, that's no longer valid because even the driveway is not going to be in the same location as the previous driveway. It's everything has changed on the lot. So it's a totally new house. And um, construction is already underway. The old house is completely gone because again, we got the full permit approved for the entire construction. Nothing was done by special permit. Uh, so again, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Valerelli? Uh, if in fact the foundation was removed and we were down to raw land, um, we would treat this like any other uh, knock down and rebuild where a large addition would not be required. Yeah. yeah. So this, so I believe this is the, the correct site plan. So the proposed driveway 
That's right. The right hand side in front of the, the garage. Yeah. Um, but the, the 21.9 is still the setback from the rear lot line. Um, so without the base, the proposed basement access and closed, um, the property does meet the requirements for usable open space. But with that constructed, it no longer meets the requirements for usable open space. Um, and as such, it's no longer something that the board can just permit as a special permit because it's a new nonconformity. Um, it would require a variance. And um, variances have a very different set of criteria. Uh, they're established by the state. Um, and the first one being, is there something about something unique about the land um, that makes a variance necessary? And I, I think as your as your application indicates, um, you know, this is very much a flat rectangular piece of land. And the the reason for providing this entrance is to provide a better entry into the basement. It's not um it's not a requirement for the property to be developed. Um, so I have a question about you. Yes, please. Calculation, because again, um, I think the architect has different numbers um, for that down in the application. I mean, I'm only just noticing this little box mm -hmm. over here for the first time. So um, the question I have is um, this calculation of, that was done sort of in this meeting seems to have been done on just the rare part of the lot. Um, yep. um, so uh, I'm not sure why the front doesn't count. So for usable, for spa open space to be considered usable, it has to be at least 20 feet by 20 feet, and it cannot include a driveway. Right. You can so, um, so like this portion of the lot here wouldn't qualify. Uh, no. The sides don't qualify because they're too narrow. What about um, the left front? So it's 28 feet to here yep. at the top of the stairs. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, so five steps is five feet. This landing is probably another, I don't think you have 20 feet from the, from here to the edge of the property. Unfortunately, it's not dimensioned. Um, so um, no, the left of the stairs, those are flower beds. So, okay. um, so that's the part. So, from the stairs to the left of the lot, and mm -hmm. likewise from the building, so the left side. So if you look at um, the front of the, um, so from the side plan, it's maybe not that clear that the left of the stairs, those are actually not stairs, those are just flower beds. Um, so, so if you look at the front. So it's these, yeah. these beds here? Yes, those are flower beds. So I'm not sure why those don't count as part of usable open space. So, let me go back to the site plan. So then you're saying that there we go. Um, so this, this is the property line here. This is the front of the house. So you're saying that from this front line of the house, what we have out here are the steps, a landing, and uh, planting beds but nothing here is like part of the part of the building. Correct. So I'm um, so from the door, the main entrance mm -hmm. the to the left of the lot. That's more than 20 feet. And yep. likewise from the door to the edge of the lot in front, that's more than 20 feet. Mm, okay. Mr. Valerelli, um, how does the building department typically consider um, planting beds when it's doing its determination of usable open space? That, that would be okay. That could be included. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem here is that the usable open space has to be a contiguous chunk of land. We can't take a corner from the left and add it to the back uh, mm -hmm. corner. It has to be contiguous. Hmm. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon. So, 
so, I'm not quite sure I understand what's meant by it has to be contiguous. If if this was a square that met the 20 by 20 foot requirement, um, and there is a lot of usable open space that is contiguous to that. In fact, pretty much the whole of it all the way around, uh, except for where the proposed driveway is. Uh, wouldn't you take that 20 by 20 and then add to it all of the other open space? Because the 20 by 20 is only a minimum requirement. It doesn't, not, not all of the open space that is counted as usable open space has to be part of that 20 by 20. Is that, is that wrong? Mr. Allerelli? Uh Mr. Chairman, so uh, historically and as a matter of plan review, uh, the building department has always used a contiguous area of land uh, to qualify for usable open space. Uh, it did not separate a, a chunk here and a chunk there. It had to be contiguous. But if the board feels as though that's uh, unfair and maybe we should look in another direction, then uh, so be it. Well, Mr. Chairman, if yeah. I could you just if you if you if if you zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire area that's usable open space, um, the way I would interpret contiguous is that you know the let me wait until we see the picture here. So you, you know you, you've got that patch there that I'll assume is a twenty by twenty foot patch. If you go up the left side of the house and then past the rear and then all the way down to the back, you get something that looks almost like uh, the border of the house. And all of that is contiguous. There's there's no place where it's totally blocked off except the proposed driveway. And by that time you've got, I think, more than enough area to count, or at least that would be the question. But it isn't a situation where there's a patch here and a patch there because it's all contiguous all the way around until you reach the driveway. We've got, yeah, so we basically have a piece here, a separate piece here. And then the third piece would be roughly here. Okay, I'm in Mr. Valerelli. This is Richard Lorendo. I'm in the butter. Um, and... yeah, we'll be we'll be getting to public comment shortly, sir. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So I'm just curious. I was trying to follow along in the bottom left hand corner. Sorry, uh, okay. On the on the plan, on the site yep. plan. Uh, what do you calculate the those dimensions as? Um so I don't know what they would be. Um I I do agree with the with the applicant that it's greater than 20 by 20. Um, and so when you say greater than 20 by 20, or we're not, we are or are not including the stairs. So that would be the typically the calculation includes stairs include that are open to the and the walkway that are open above. And so it includes the deck at the rear as well, because that's again open to the. So and just to clarify, even if we exclude the stairs, it is still more than twenty by twenty. Right, but I don't think there's twenty by. I don't think there's twenty feet between the edge of the end here and the street. Um, no, because um, so the stairs is um, so where you have the vertical arrow, that's pretty much like the stairs. Mm -hmm. Everything to the left of that, those are just flower beds. Right. Stairs. Yeah. But typically, we would include the stairs in the usable open space because you can you're able to access them. So is not that entire rectangle, can, is that not greater than 20 by 20? In the so this is definitely path? greater than 20 by 20. So, so, I, I, so what, <laughs> maybe I'm oversimplifying, but what is the issue then if that's greater than 20 by 20? Well, we, so 
the question is then, um, so this is the definition of usable open space. Um, and as, as Mr. Valarelli had said, the typical interpretation of this bylaw by the uh, by the building to, by the inspectional services department, who you know routinely interprets what our bylaws mean, they have always taken the interpretation that this implies that the usable open space has to be a contiguous area, so that the minimum dimensions are twenty by twenty, but it all has to be the same piece of property in order to be considered usable open space. So it would be the largest of those three could be considered the usable open space. Um, the, but the word contiguous does not appear in the definition. And so the, the question then before the board is what, what does the board believe the correct interpretation of this should be? Does it necessarily, should the board agree with the this the interpretation for the building department that in order to be considered usable open space the space all does need to be contiguous or does the board feel that that's not the case and that as long as there are pieces of land on the property that total up to the required amount of usable open space that is sufficient to meet the requirement mr chairman mr hanlon so if you look at the actual language of the statute and we don't have the the uh what it what it says is no horizontal dimension is less than 25 feet mm -hmm. so if you're going to go and try to add up the amount of of usable open space on the property i would think that you would be able to take anything that otherwise meets the definition of usable open space. Mm -hmm. And as long as it had a, 20, a horizontal dimension of, in this case, at least 20 feet, and no, no horizontal dimension is less than 20 feet, then that would count. And the statute doesn't say anything about having those things all one big patch as opposed to adding up the pieces. And mm -hmm. I would think that just, and I'm not trying to actually be fair or not fair here. I'm just trying to read what the statute says. Um, but it seems to me that that the statute just says that it shall be deemed usable if it has a minimum dimension of 25 feet, which in this case is 20. And we've seen three patches that do seem to meet that requirement. I'm assuming they do. And I would think that you would be able to add all of those together because each one of them counts as usable open space in order to see whether you have the right amount in total. Uh, there's nothing in the statute that suggests that we can disregard two pieces of what otherwise is usable open space because it's not, it's not connected. So my inclination would be to, to just apply the statute as I think it, it's written uh and and not impose an additional requirement of contigu contiguity uh to it yeah so i've been sort of been reading and rereading the definition here in terms of looking for plural versus singular um language and the the first line where it says the part or parts of a lot designated and developed for outdoor use by the occupants which sort of implies that it does not need to be a single piece that it is either a part of the lot or it's several parts of the lot developed for outdoor use um and could i please um, also clarify one thing that those three yes sir we highlighted they are all contiguous right because from the front you can walk mm -hmm. all the way through the side to the back and all the way around the back so i'm, I'm implying that it needs to be contiguous. I'm just saying, like, they actually seem to be contiguous. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Th that's actually where I was started from before, but Mr. Valorelli has persuaded me that the, the strips along the side of the house do not meet the requirement that their minimum dimension is 75 feet. So if you don't think of it in terms of contiguity, but you just think of it in terms of the statutory requirements, 
those don't count as usable open space because they have a horizontal dimension of less than 20 feet. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, but I, I, they, they can certainly be accessed from one another. They just, we can't count them space wise as being usable open space, but, right. but the point is well taken that those, that those, the three areas that were identified, you are able to go from one to the other without hindrance. Um, are there further questions from the board? So, Mr. Chairman, not Mr. to belabor, to, not to belabor the point. So, when when we talk about usable open space, in order for there to be any at all in this instance, you have to have at least one area that's twenty by twenty. Would you agree with that? So if you didn't I think, have I think any area that you're considering to be usable open space has to have a minimum dimension of 20 by 20. Okay. So if you had less than that, then you would by definition not have usable open space. Correct. So if you then said, okay, well, we do have areas that are 20 by 20. Now, does the calculation then kick into whether or not we have we meet the 30%? Is that where we go next yes so we had run so i had run the calculation based on the um uh, the rear yard having the the inclusion of the new of the of the proposed enclosure over the stair and that had reduced the usable open space to 26.25 um and I think if you were to just assume for the, this is, so let's go back. Um, what is the, just need to look up again, the square footage of the house as proposed. So the proposed house is, 4,679 square feet. Um, so, uh, this and then divide this by 21.9. Yeah, so original, so what we were looking at in the rear yard was a, essentially two spaces adding up to 56.1 feet and that was multiplied by 21.9 feet which was 1228.6 and then in the front if we just assume it's 20 by 20 which is 400 gives us our gives us 16 roughly 1628 Shoot. And then if we divide that by, then we're up at 34, 35%. Right. So I think we have confidence that we can make that amount of space if that's the way the, the board wants to consider it. But we would certainly be looking for a more you know, final calculation from the, from the applicant. I just want to clarify that there is a table yep. for the application where we have um, the actual calculation for this application. So the table that was put up earlier, um, I wasn't even aware that was part of the package somewhat. In the yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Here. So that is the forty-two point one percent. I think, yeah, because he has here it's listed as the usable open space as, as you know, almost 4,200 square feet, um, which on a 6,000 square foot lot, that, that number is incorrect. Um, I think there's parts included in that number that aren't correct. Um, yeah, I, I think we have included like the deck upstairs as well. And yeah. And maybe even the driveway. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But but the you know, the building department had calculated it using the full depth of the rear yard 
the full width of the rear yard and come up with an area of 1353, which was over 30%. So that's why they had issued the initial permit. Are there any further questions from the board at this point? Mr. Chair, this is Mr. Kelly. If I may. Yeah. Please. Um, if, if, is, if this was a hash or instead of a, a dog house enclosure, if it were a door or a hatch, mm -hmm. would that be counted towards the um, open area or would that be not um, in the open area calculations if it were just a door or a hatchway yeah. coming out of the basement through the... Mr. Valerelli, like, how, does the, how does the building department typically calculate that? Does it include it? That's allowed, Mr. Shannon. So if it's just a simple bulkhead, then it's allowed to be used as part of the open space calculation. Use both okay. spaces. Anything further, Mr. Holly? Nope. I think um right. So with that, I'm We'll now open the meeting for public comment. Uh, public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. The chair asks that those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing to please be patient and allow those wishing to speak for the first time to go ahead. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You will be called upon by the meeting host. You'll be asked to give your name and address and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions and comments are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. And once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed and the board and staff will do our best to show documents being discussed. Um, there was one member of the public I know who was interested in speaking, uh, the, Mr. Landro. Lorendo. Yes, yes. Mr. Lorendo, call me Rich. Mr. Lorendo, uh, if we could have your name and address on the record, please. Uh, I'm at 15 Rubley Street. Well, thank you. All right. Um, first off, the house design looks great. Welcome to the new neighbors. Hope we can make this work. Okay, welcome aboard. Um, two things come up. One, the special thing was sent out because of a variance to cut back with inside the 20 foot setback. All right, so that itself, uh, I'm here to protect the setback rules because we don't want overcrowding amongst mm -hmm. us. Our houses are close enough. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned earlier about parking is at level. And I'm not sure if anybody's had a chance to look at the house from my view, I see a sloped driveway where the grade is growing up pretty gradually and it looks like it's almost curved. So when you talk about open space, that curved driveway may cut into it. My concern as an abutter is two, two, uh, twofold. One would be the um, water drainage coming into our properties because we are on a, a low water area. I got a sump pump and I don't need additional water. Uh, two, want to make sure it's, it lives up to the zoning bylaws at this town, which I've grown up in, born and raised here. I actually live in a house that I grew up in, okay? And uh, uh, I've enjoyed the neighborhood and enjoyed the character of everything. Again, the house looks great. It also came with a clean slate at the very beginning of when your architect was designing it. Knowing the bylaws, it's almost like this is after the fact. It makes you think about the builder and the architect. I'll leave it at that, folks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, um, next on the, with our hand up is Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, two questions. Uh, first, just Sort of a, I don't know, a information packet on one. I noticed that when I was looking through the application, a whole bunch of pages were marked Oakland Street. I don't understand that. Pages I think that there was a, I think there was a, a package and then accidentally attached to the end of the document that was 
for a different site? Well, no, it's actually between the Wallace Street information. Oh. Pages uh, 16 through 20. Okay. It's a, a series of elevations. So that's that's sort of a pro. I mean, it probably was just an error, but I didn't understand. Okay. Was there anything at the Yeah, the other question is this. Um, so the house that was on the site was demolished. The foundation was retained. Um, I would like to ask the applicant, uh, was there a tree plan performed? Because I've looked at the street view uh, pictures and there seemed to be two large street trees um, in the pictures. I looked at the aerials and uh, I don't know, it, it's a little inconsistent with the uh, street view pictures that I found. So I'm wondering, were the street trees taken? Do they currently exist? That's my first part of the question. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, to the applicant, are there street, are there trees currently on the street in front of the property? Yes, um, so first of all, we completed the tree plan and that was all approved. Um, secondly, um, there is one tree in front of the property, which is preserved. So if you go on site, you can see there is a protection all around it. Mm -hmm. There is um, just one, I believe. I mean, there was a tiny little stump right in the middle of the front of the property. We met the stump there. So, I mean, if there is a second tree, then it must not be on our lot. So there was just a tree and a tiny little stump, which I don't even know how long the stump has been there. It's, it's certainly not the second okay. thing that tree for the past since we got the property, so. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mr. Oh. that sort of, uh, that helps explain. I, I'm glad to hear the street trees being protected and uh, that there was a tree plan that was, uh, I, I, I'm assuming approved by the tree board. Sounds like it was. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, just briefly to that point, um, this is the, the site plan at the front. Um, there's this 24 inch caliber tree just off the edge of the property. And there's a second one um, that's in front of the property here on this side. Um, and I believe that's a, either a hydrant or a manhole or something. So, um, so there, there are the two trees in front, but only one is in front of the property. Right, okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. That was my confusion, thank you. Yeah, not a problem, thank you. Um, uh, next on our uh, wish to speak is uh, D. Hirsch. Go ahead and unmute yourself and name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dan Hirsch, 49 Nightclub Street. Uh, we are neighbors on the other side of Mr. Lorendo, our home sandwich, um, uh, the applicants. Uh, again, I echo what Rich had to say. We welcome the neighbors. We, you know, this is something that's very new to us. We've lived in this house for 20 plus years. Um, the only thing that raises a bit of a concern is just the timing of a lot of this. Um, the foundation is in place. And if I understood Mr. Valerelli correctly, I believe the permit was, did he say that it was awarded with the idea that that enclosure would stay open? That's cool. And then now it's being asked to be enclosed after? Mr. Villarelli? That's correct, Mr. Hurst. So if that structure remained open, an open set of stairs going to the basement, we probably wouldn't be here tonight because it would not need a special permit uh, based on the uh, usable open space. So the uh, inspector who uh, issued the permit um, said, as long as that remains open, we can count that entire rear yard. The calculation of that rear yard uh, clearly satisfied the gross floor area of the structure. All right, thank you. Uh, you know, the only concern we have is just the stormwater issue. As Richard indicated, this is a very low-lying area. Uh, any new construction that causes any kind of additional challenges for us is, is a concern. So to add into the setback, if that impacted that in any way, um, you know, that would be a concern. Beyond that, um, again, I echo what Rich said, you know, it looks beautiful. I, I you know... Um, Again, this is a new process for I've never been a part of something like this. So we just want to make sure it's done within the bylaws accurately and correctly. And um, I mean, that's really who we speak from. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Hanlon. Mr. Chairman, this is Pat. Yes, Mr. Hanlon. 
we we got so much involved in talking about usable open space that we didn't really we skipped over really fast what the reason is why they need the open the permit which has nothing to do with open space that would be a reason why they couldn't get the permit uh there's it says explicitly in the bylaw that it is okay uh to have a uh, uh enclosed into the yard that's part of the regulations that have to do with the uh uh, with the preservation of the yard. So we're not talking about a variance here. We're not talking about anything that disregards the terms of the zoning ordinance. It's just that the zoning ordinance has, or the zoning bylaw has in it uh, an exception, and the applicant is trying to show that uh, he meets that exception and that otherwise this meets the requirements of a, of a special permit. But either way, no matter how we come out on this, the, there's no issue about uh, varying the uh, or allowing a nonconformity with the zoning bylaw. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Um, next on our list uh, is Laura Wolchewski. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, it, just I, name an address of the record, please. For Laura Wolchewski, 53 Nikon Street. And we are backyard abutters to the new neighbors. And it, again, I will say that it, it looks nice and welcome. It's a great neighborhood, but I am just a little concerned with the setbacks from the, the new jut out and also the deck. It looks like it's 12 feet. <laughs> and what is the minimum setback? To the lot line. Mr. Valerelli, what's the required setback for an open deck? I'm sorry, Laura, are you talking the rear yard? In the rear yard. In the rear yard, yes, the rear yard, the, the jut out for the stairs and also the deck. Yeah, so an open deck, if it's constructed entirely in the rear yard, can go up to 10 feet, but not exceed more than 50% of the required rear yard. Uh, distance. Uh, so in this case here, it looks like the deck is, I don't have it, it's not calculated on my plot plan, but it looks like it is about 10 feet, which would be a lot. Mr. Valerelli, it's dimensioned at 12.2 feet off the rear yard. Yeah, that's the distance, correct. And, um, and the depth of the rear yard is 21.9, so it is less, it is less than half. That's correct. And right. the and proposed, the proposed basement access would not ex, would not extend as far as the deck does. Okay, so there there's no minimum even for a an enclosed structure, or a setback. So it can be so the an enclosed an enclosed entrance or porch can be ex, ex, can extend beyond the property but it's not excuse me beyond the setback line uh by three and a half feet by right um and if they look to extend beyond that it can be done so but only with a special permit issued by uh, the board of appeals okay so i i just want to be clear as to how far can you go to the property line from the enclosed proposed stairway uh, how far does that have to be so if they without inter without a hearing before the zoning board of appeals um in this case uh with a 20-foot rear yard um it could be 16 and a half feet from the rear uh from the rear lot line um but with a with a public hearing and a ruling by the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, it can be closer to the property line than that. Um, but there's not, at that point, because it's a discretionary permit, there's not a fixed dimension, but the use of it is very restricted to only being an enclosed entrance. So I guess that's the, the thing that's a little bit weird is that if it's only 12 feet from the property line and the, the structure is already built, so it seems like the cart was put before the horse. 
Well, certainly if they've gone ahead and put in the foundations for this portion, then that would be at their own risk. Um, but I, I see that the applicant shaking his head. I, I'm guessing that the footing has have not been put in place for the larger rear entrance. It has been. It, should, I, should I respond to that? So I know that there is a, there should be a foundation coming off the rear of the house for a bulkhead. So it would still be coming off, you know, four or five feet off the rear of the house in order to uh, uh, put in a, you know, your standard sort of angled bulkhead doors for basement access. What they're requesting would then extend that farther and be taller. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I just wanted to be clear because the the deck is in a different situation than the entrance here. The deck is allowable by right because the limitation was 10 feet or half the distance to the uh, goal line, so to speak. And that and that meets that. So they we don't they don't need a special permit for that. What they need a special permit for is just the entrance that we're talking about. And that is why we're here and there's no once they ask for a special permit there's no automatic number that limits what we could do we could let it go all the way out if we thought that that meant that met the conditions of the special permit it's a discretionary decision but it has nothing to do with the deck the deck is already within the requirements of the bylaw thank you Ms. Wachuski did you have Another question? Uh, no, I I don't think so. It just again, it seems like the the foundation footing is already there, and it's not a bulkhead where it would be at the ground level that you would go down. It goes up, so it seems like it is a little bit more. And again, I I, I feel bad for the owners. I we want to be friendly neighbors, and it's a great neighborhood and all that, but. We just want the rules to be followed and not to be too overcrowded. And it's nice now because we do have a little backyards and some space between the houses. And we just don't want that to disappear by mm -hmm. everything being too close. Understood. Thank you. Uh, then next on our list uh, is Judy Mintz. Hi, um, Judy Mintz. I'm 161 Wollaston. So I'm across the street from the new house. And I just, it's just a quick comment because everybody's concerned about um, water. And I just want to say sort of fo following from afar what um, the new, new owners have had to go through for mitigation. I think that the neighborhood is by and large going to be better off from a from a drainage perspective than we have been. That's that's all I wanted to say. I think it's good. Thank you. Um, and then uh, well, Mr. Hirsch had his hand up, but then it went away. Um, are there any other members of the public wishing to address this hearing? Either raise your hand digitally or you can wave in your window. Uh, Mr. Larando for a second. Yep, uh, give me my five seconds of fame. I'd appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, new neighbors, welcome. Okay, uh, we're good people. It's a great neighborhood. I hope it works out for you. Um, we just wanna make sure the, the bylaw are adhered to that the new foundation that that's in right now adheres to what was permitted and not for future use so if someone could check out on that and then also look at the slope of the grade of the driveway again that's going to um, impact me and i understand drainage systems but things flow downhill i'm the guy at the bottom of the hill okay so I'd appreciate if we could follow up with that, with the, with the town and the permitting aspect and someone come by, but I'd hate to see them build the structure and someone say, uh-oh, 
and then I feel even worse. Okay, so let's nip it early, do the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, everybody. Appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Um, and then Mr. Hirsch for a second. Thank you. Uh, again, just to echo, I, I appreciate the fact that this should possibly see some improvement. I want to thank Judy for mentioning that because I do recognize that. Um, and I look forward to that happening. But I do want to be clear about something. This foundation is in. Um, yeah. I noticed the deck piece, how it does slide back in the, in the drawings about a foot or two. So no concern there. But this is in place right now. Um, and I think that was probably the greatest concern is that this is in right now. And without getting, when you get a notice of a special permit or a hearing for a special permit and you see some of the work is already done, you, you just have questions. I am new to this process. Again, I feel, like Laura said it, I feel awful even being brought into this. However, um, we're here. So, you know, we want it to be right and correct, but be clear that foundation is in right now. Um, so, you know, it's not beyond us to realize that if this wasn't granted, the hardship that may cause, but at the same time, this is the, the this was a clean slate and the opportunity was there to do it correctly. And it, and it, it just looks as though it wasn't, but, you know, so be it. Um, it doesn't have, um, you know, a, a, a lifelong impact, but we want to point that out because that is, that is the case. So uh, that was all. And, and again, I, I certainly hope this is all resolved. Um, I thank everybody for their time and um, um, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to address the board? Any new hands up? I believe Ms. Wolchewski's hand is just up from before. Um, going once, going twice. Okay, with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment portion of the hearing. Um, and we'll turn back to the board. So, um, there have been several questions that were raised by um, the members of the, of the public, and there was a, a letter submitted uh, to the board with which had a, another question as well. Um, just uh, briefly for background, Mr. Valarelli, um, so as a part of the construction process, the building department does go in and does verify uh, construction at various phases as they proceed. Um, so would it be fair to say that the building department has uh, visited the site and is aware of the that the footing and the footings and the foundation walls are as per the permit? A little more than that, Mr. Chairman. So two as builds are required, one after the foundation is in place uh, to make sure that it was constructed as proposed. Uh, the inspector will check that out. Then at the end of the day, prior to the issuance of the CO, that the entire building was constructed as proposed. Okay. To answer your question, yes. Okay. And to your to your knowledge, um, were there any questions in regards to the the foundation as it was poured on this project? Not to my knowledge, Mr. Chairman. That's that's to say um, that there were, and I'm just not aware of them, but not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, and uh, Mr. Raleigh, again, I'm just on background. Um, as far as, so on a, on a project like this, where the footprint of the house is larger than the previous footprint, uh, the driveway is larger than the previous driveway. Um, as a part of the review process that the applicant has to go through, would they need to um, submit a drainage plan through the engineering department? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. So if the impervious area of the proposed exceeds 350 square feet of what was there originally, they would need a strong water management plan. I believe they did file for one of this. Okay. The, the applicant is nodding in assent that they yeah. did submit. We, yes, we did that. Um, we got a civil engineer. We did oh. all of that. Um, that also even determines, like, I know people might be concerned that sort of the basement floor seems pretty high. It's because we also did a test pit as well. So um, all that was vetted by civil engineers, even the sloping driver as well. It was all factored into the calculation. Okay. 
And that and, has already all been approved yeah. as part of the original plan for the house. None of that is changing. Okay. Um, so I think we have a, some of the questions that had come up about the deck. I think we've addressed those. Um, we've talked about the the water question. Uh, we talked about the foundation. We've talked about um, the grade of the driveway as it relates to stormwater. Uh, we've talked about the foundation. Um, so then the, 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 I think it's time to sort of come back for the board to the, the question that's really before us. So um, this is a request under section 539A of the zoning bylaws to request a, um, an enclosed entrance in the setback. Um, typically we see these in the front yard um, very occasionally we see them in the side yard. I think this is the first time I've seen one in a rear yard. Um, but the bylaw makes no differentiation between the between the yards when it comes to enclosed entrances. The um, as we had, had said earlier, the applicants can have three and a half feet by right, um, and then beyond that, it needs to be uh, referred to the zoning board of appeals, and the board needs to. Um, make determination based on uh, what is being requested. I just want to flip to that page quickly in the bylaws. So it's this section here, 539A. So uh, enclosed entrances, not more than 25 square feet in floor area, more than one story in height. Should not project more than three and a half feet, may extend into the minimum yard regulations otherwise provided for the district. Porches and enclosed entrances larger than that allowed above may extend into the minimum yard regulations otherwise provided for the district by special permit. And so that is what the request is. And then um, the special oops, too far the special permit requirements, the findings that the board would have to make. Design <laughs> criteria. Here we go. Um, so one is that the use requested is listed as a special permit use in special use regulations for the applicable district or is so designated elsewhere in this bylaw. So this is something that the board can approve by special permit um, under 539A. Uh, the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience and welfare. It's for the board to discuss. Requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. Um, whereas this, the proposal is in the rear yard, um, I don't believe that this is in question. Uh, the requested use will not overload any public water drainage or sewer system or any other municipal system to such an extent that the requested use or any developed use in the immediate area or any other area of the town will be unduly subjected to hazards affecting the health, safety, or general welfare. Um, there were questions uh, asked by several of the neighbors in regards to uh, stormwater and drainage in the area. Um, and this was was explained by the by the applicant and by um, Mr. Valarelli that uh, the, they did have to engage a special, uh, excuse me, a civil engineer to look at stormwater and drainage issues. Um, and any recommendations that they have made will, are, would have been a part of the initial building permit and would not be impacted by the area that is currently being considered uh, for this enclosed entrance. Um, any special regulations for the use as may be provided in this bylaw fulfilled. Again, that's section 539A. Uh, this requested use will not impair the integrity or character of the district or adjoining districts, nor be detrimental to the health or welfare. Um, the board should discuss that. That's the, the question about the, the, the crowding and the setback and the encroachment. 
Um, and then the requested use will not, by its addition to the neighborhood, cause an excess of the use that could be detrimental to the character of said neighborhood. Um, and in, in this situation, it's a single family house with an enclosed entrance. It's um, not something that would be an excess in a, in a single family district. Um, so with that, I would go back to the board um, in regards to this, um, this request. Uh, I think we need to discuss uh, whether the requested use is essential or desirable to the convenience and welfare uh, of the public, which in this case would be uh, for, the, for the applicant and uh, those impacted. And then um, the question about whether it would impair the integrity or character of the district or adjoining districts. I'm gonna go back to the application. So I can show what's really included. This is the. This is really what's it. Is is just this additional piece of construction here. Um, just a, a question for the applicant: Is there any particular um, reason for the dimensions on it, or is that just? Um, I think it's so that you have space behind the, you have a landing inside and then stairs up and the top step is where the door is. I, I don't think it's any longer than it needs to be. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I think that's for the builders. <laughs> and I guess that was also for the um, surveyor to kind of correctly calculate the um, rear setback. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Holly. Um, there is, um, I may have misheard the applicant saying for the egress requirements. Um, there are two window wells shown on the southwest elevation from each of the sleeping quarters, so to speak, a bedroom space there. So is this not purely for a egress requirements, more like an entry being treated in the rear of the lot. That's all it is, right? If I understand. Yeah, that's correct. It's sort of for a walkout, more like an entry. It's not really to meet egress code requirements because egress requirements. Yes. Right. Okay. So, so, Mr. Chet, we've yep. two issues here, right? One is rear yard setback, you know, mm -hmm. not compliance in there, and then the open space calculation portion. Correct. So, I, on the, as, as far as the open space goes, it's just that if if the construction of this was to reduce the usable open space beyond thirty percent, then we would have a whole other question we need to address. Um, if the board is confident with allowing usable open space to be to to count various pieces of the property that each individually conform with the requirements uh, to be counted as usable open space if the board is comfortable with that approach then this property would have enough remaining usable open space um, with the addition of this entrance and then the, the question of the of the entrance is does the board feel that it meets the special permit criteria in order to be approved right Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dupont. So as I think uh, Mr. Hawley said, and as you just said, so there are really the two issues. So one is whether or not it meets the criteria for the special permit. And I feel arguably that it does. So my focus then is that you, you can make that uh, decision based on the special permit criteria, as long as you don't run afoul of the open usable open space requirement. And I like your little red rectangles because that I think sets the question 
you know, very visually, but I'm not entirely sure that I know what the dimensions are on those. And, you know, it would be helpful to me um, just to be able to actually do the math. And I don't think that I can do that mm -hmm. as it stands. And I would prefer if we had something that was more in the in line with, uh, you know, a site plan with having those numbers provided for those rectangles. And then we can add them up. I have no problem. I don't think that there's any prohibition whatsoever in the definition mm -hmm. of usable open space. I think if you've got 20 by 20 and you've got 10 of those, you're fine. You can just add them all up together. I don't think they have to be continuous. I know we've used the word contiguous mm -hmm. tonight, but I don't think they have to flow into one another. So I think if you have them separate, I'm comfortable with the idea of being able to add those together as long as we hit the 30%. And so I don't know that we hit the 30%. And so that's my hesitation mm -hmm. is I would like to see those numbers confirmed so we can do the math. Would you feel comfortable with a vote of the board that had a, um, a requirement that the applicant submit a revised site plan indicating the the areas and the total calculation as a part of uh, as a part of the decision or would you rather that they make the calculations so we have those figures before the board votes i i can go either way but i think we have to be very explicit Mm -hmm. So if I remember, I wrote it down. I think that so we're we're dealing with thirty percent of the gro the gross floor area. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So I believe you had said it was forty six seventy nine. That is possible. Oops, too far. Yes, 4679. Yeah, 46, so, so if you check my math, I think we need 1403.7 square feet of usable right. open space. So if we were to, and and you know, the other members can speak to this, but if we were to say, you know, that we're granting it conditioned upon the um them providing evidence. Uh, that they do, in fact, meet the 30%. I think I'd want to consider adding that, you know, meaning 1,403.7 square feet, if that's the accurate number or or above. Okay. But they also have to establish that those three rectangles are 20 by 20 at least. Yeah. So those that would be the condition I would foresee. So we do have a condition we've used in the past, which was that the applicant is to provide a certified site plan indicating and dimensioning the areas of the existing and proposed site that comply with the requirements for usable open space as indicated in section two of the zoning bylaw of the town of Arlington to the special services department for review and approval. Um, so we could use that as a base and just modify it. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I think the, the key thing here is if we're taking the, the view that you can add up each of the individual parts that meet the requirement, the horizontal dimension requirement, that that is not, and if that's the view we wish to take, that's not the view that inspectional services has taken mm -hmm. so unless we make it clear what we envision uh they would presumably do what they always do and then we have the, the the case back again so the key thing on the 20 the key thing on the adding it up is the absence of the requirement of continuity and the ability to add up every bit of open space of open space that meets the requirement for usable open space okay So the 
what if we were to do that as a um, as a condition, we would need to basically state how we want it calculated. Right. And of course, if we did that, we would also just as a matter of course, include the numbers that Mr. DuPont has been talking about. Out how to word that. Um, are there other questions or concerns among the board? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. We, I guess we we need to go back a little bit to the usable open space requirement. Not, I'm sorry, I said that exactly the opposite. Move back to the question of the requirements of the special permit. Um, I'm sort of of two minds on this. I don't really think that that I understand what the advantages are necessarily and why this, this rear entrance needs to be enclosed. But when you look at it on the map, or on the plan, um, it, it certainly doesn't. It doesn't extend further than the deck, or it doesn't appear to, to do that. And and I don't see that there's an issue of crowding. Uh, the the superstructure over it is what possibly gives rise to a concern that with respect to uh, to respect to the abutters. But I find it very difficult to say that this is somehow harmful to the, the neighbors or has any significant yeah, effect really on how the application doesn't the specifically sense crowded here. state the reason for the request. To me, if I could ask the applicant sort of what the the reasoning behind requesting a um the enclosed rear entrance as you're proposing it what the what the reasoning is behind what you're hoping it'll accomplish for you yeah so um what we're hoping to accomplish is really um for someone coming out of the basement into the rear yard to be able to exit um standing upright um for elderly parents really um because sort of like having to fiddle with the bulkhead doors um my mom had like surgery on her on her knees and having to bend to sort of open the bulkhead door from the inside um, in order to come out into the rear yard from the basement, we really want that sort of just be like a regular seamless walk out. Really, that's that's the main thing we're aiming for. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, in light of that, I just don't see that that the projection here and given the configuration of the house that a projection here of 7.3 feet for the closed entrance is going to have present a problem under I believe it's paragraph f mm -hmm. uh, it, it seems to me to be too small uh, to really significantly involve the the uh, compatibility with with the neighborhood it's not really going to make a big change that's the way i feel about it Thank you. Anything further from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccadelli. I just had a question. I, I think, um, you know, looking at the, the drawings of the specific enclosed um, rear entry, um, I think I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding what the total height of that is. And um, to, to Mr. Hanlon's point uh, just now, I, I think it's probably not too impactful, but uh, I, I see a dimension that's maybe seven foot nine to some line, but I wonder um, what the overall height is just so that we can sort of uh, have it in our mind for that kind of impact that it would have you know, from the neighbor's yards. Um, but that's the applicant if they have a specific dimension. Unfortunately, the because this was scanned at one point, it's hard to read 
Yeah, I was having that same problem. Give me a second. Um, let yep. me. Um, I have that um uh, somewhere in front of me to try to pull it up. Um. um so. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to find that so I can give you the precise number. I mean, I can kind of work backwards. So for example, the door you see there, sort of like is the standard door height, six foot eight. Uh, but um, give me a few seconds. I'm not sure why it's taking so much. That comment, we can kind of go with that while I search for this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a cleaner copy. I might be able to help Mr. Riccadelli on that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so Dan, the tall side looks like it's uh, seven foot eight. And okay. Long... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, it looks like it's uh, seven foot eight and three quarter. And then on the lower side uh, of that shed style roof, it looks like it's six nine and three quarter. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. That's, that's helpful. So um, there's one thing I should add um, that might, that's not very obvious from this view, um, which I think some of the neighbors have sort of noted, noticed and pointed out, which is um, as part of the regular plan, which was approved by right, um, there's going to be um, a retaining wall around the perimeter of the property, which is about um, two feet tall. So essentially what you're seeing right here, the finished grade is gonna be about two feet higher. And the reason for the retaining wall all around was because of the um, the groundwater. We found that the groundwater below was too low. So our foundation, our basement could not be at the level of the previous property. It had to be elevated higher. So if you add, so that's why when they see the foundation walls, they see it protrude above the floor. It's because that is all part of the original design that was approved that there's gonna be a retaining wall and we're gonna raise the grade up a little bit. So. Um, Essentially, um, we can take like the um, a conservative estimate is just to add two feet to that number, so it becomes about nine feet. Um, so just to clarify, so you're saying that there's a retaining wall around the rear of the property that to your property is two feet taller than the adjacent properties? Yes, correct. Around the perimeter, three sides of the property. So. Um, if you were to look at um, the um, construction set that was originally approved, that was all part of okay. the approval. So, and obviously the retaining wall hasn't been built yet. Um, so that's why it's not apparent. Um, okay. Um, so should the board be looking to vote favorably on this um there are three standard special permit conditions which a board the board would um, include for any special permit which i will now read into the record the first 
uh, standard number one, the final plans and specifications approved by the board for the permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, number two is the building inspector is hereby notified these to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time determined that violations are present and the inspector of buildings shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw under the provisions of chapter 40 section 21d and institute non-criminal complaints if necessary inspector of buildings may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1 and number three is the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant. Um, in addition to that, um, as we had discussed the, the question about how to count usable open space um, and to Mr. DuPont's question about um, making sure that they're sufficient, um, I would propose another condition which would read, number, would it be number four, which would read the applicant is to provide a certified plot plan indicating and dimensioning the three areas of the proposed site to be counted as usable open space. Each area must individually qualify as counting towards usable open space, i.e. 20 by 20 feet open to above, and collectively must equal at least 30% of the gross floor area of the house, um, i.e. 1,403.7 square feet. Does that meet everyone's concerns in that regard? Are there any further questions in regards to this application? Seeing none, I would ask for a motion. And Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move that the application be uh, approved subject to the three standard conditions plus the one additional con condition um, uh, relating to the calculation of usable open space that the chairman just read into the record. Second. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So um, this would be a vote of the Zoning Board of Appeals to approve a special permit for 160 Wollaston Avenue. Uh, with four total conditions. Um, it was motioned by Mr. Hanlon, seconded by Mr. DuPont. Are there any additional questions from the board? No. Seeing none, uh, roll call vote of the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The special permit for 160 Wallace and Avenue is approved. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I'd just like to note before we move on to the next case that I was impressed by the the tenor of the of the hearing, the way in which everybody respectfully dealt with each other. And I also want to say that Mr. Valerelli, who was always very helpful, was particularly helpful tonight. And thank him very much for, for his support. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you, one and all. Uh, with that, um, we move on to item number four on our agenda, which is docket. Uh, let me stop the share here first, uh, which is docket number 3726, or uh, which is 320 Appleton Street. Um, so I would go ahead and ask the applicant to go ahead and introduce themselves and tell us what they would like to do. And I will uh, load up the documents for this evening's hearing. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair. My name is Adam Glassman. I'm the architect representing uh, 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 the owners in this case for 320 uh, Appleton Street. And they are applying to construct a new front mudroom uh, addition uh, with an open stoop and stair uh, within the front yard setback. All right, thank you. Almost got things in front of me here. And we're applying for a special permit.
Meeting, share screen, application. Hey, okay. Um, Their application materials. Whoops, that's just the application materials. I got the wrong file. Ooh, maybe I did. Letter from our neighbors. Oh. What did I do with the drawings? Let's see here. <laughs> ah, there we go. One second here. New share. There we go. Okay. Uh, this is our cover page, and on the front is a, uh, a rendering of the proposed mudroom. It's uh, approximately 96 square feet. Uh, here is our site plan. Uh, might be a little hard to read, uh, but the the mudroom addition would be replacing an existing open front stoop, uh, which is uh unsightly and, and dangerous to use in, in icy and in wet weather do you know the dimension to the sidewalk uh well it's from from what from the house so or i guess the where the sidewalk well, is in relation to the property line well there's a, a tag here that says 25.2 feet from the house to the but, but is the property line the, the edge of the sidewalk as far as i know yeah okay yeah uh, i'm sorry these black and white photos we sent them in color but yeah. uh if you look on the lower left photo uh we you can see the character of the neighborhood very similar house size and styles most of these homes have existing uh one story uh, front bump outs, uh, enclosed entries, and we'd be uh, consistent with that pattern up and down the street. If you see on the right side, the lower right, that's the existing house with the uh, uh, like a, an aluminum awning over the uh, the concrete stairs that we that we're hoping to replace. That's right there. Yeah. Uh, just our our. FAR calculation for the existing house. Uh, I don't know how relevant this is, but we've got uh, 2,308 square feet. Okay. And then that's in our in our our proposed um, GFA plans, which show a 96 uh, square foot addition. Proposed addition. Okay. Our zoning table. Um, okay. Um, the the house is the, has existing non-conforming setbacks, and that's why we're applying for a special permit. Um, our open space, if you go to the next slide, uh, is conforming, and will remain conforming. We have color coded plan, but apparently that got reproduced as black and white. Uh, we're only losing 18 square feet of usable open space, and we've we're far exceeding the uh, required amount. Next slide. That's the proposed with the mudroom in place. Correct. Okay. Uh, the existing plans show the area of demo, uh, and these existing elevations show the area of demo to the limited to the front scoop. So comparisons uh, existing and proposed, uh, existing in the upper left, proposed mm -hmm. on the lower right with a kind of a classical uh, designed. Uh, yeah, massing. Okay. Next slide. Uh, more uh, existing and proposed. Um, scales maintained, characters maintained. Uh, we believe the streetscape is being improved with a more welcoming uh, addition. Uh, view from the front right. And our setback uh, envelope. This is why we're here, because of the violation of the front yard setback. 
um, the plan view. Um, the addition and plan is is 10 feet by nine and a half feet, uh, not adding a full basement underneath. Um, I'm not sure that we can call this um, because the stairs are exterior. I was wondering if we can call this an enclosed entry. I'm assuming not. Uh, so we're not we're not applying for it as an enclosed entry as it, but we are applying as a non-conforming front addition. Uh, our roof plan, capable roof structure over the proposed addition, similar style to the existing dormers, front, side, and rear views, no exchange to the rear. And that's the last page. And that's what we got. Okay. Um, so this is, so similar to the, the last uh, hearing we had, this is again a request to, uh, build um, what we would consider an enclosed entrance uh, within the the setback as as opposed to the previous one. This is not in the rear. This is on the front, um, extending towards the the street from the front of the house. Um, and as the applicant, as the applicant's architect had shown um, on the earlier plans, this is something that um, is fairly common on Appleton Street. Um, the one, the one question I had, oh, I had two questions. One I already asked, which was the, I was concerned about the proximity to the sidewalk, um, but that's been a, that's been addressed by the, by the architect. The other question I had was so, the one of the statements is that the existing step um, is kind of small and difficult to navigate, especially in the winter time, um, but the new proposed front step is actually. The same size, if not a little bit smaller, um, and is completely uncovered. And I, I only raised that because I wasn't sure if, um, you know, there have been any, and it, it'll be much more exposed because you're that much farther out in front of the bushes. Um, so I wasn't sure if you had considered possibly making the mudroom smaller and allowing for a larger covered landing before the entry door. Um, I think the real issue for the owners, and they, that you please feel free to jump in any time, is that you know one of the main issues was the fact that there was no uh, storage for their their family. And we mm -hmm. have hockey players, and we have athletic equipment, and they you know we try to keep the mudroom as small as possible while also accommodating their storage needs um, and having a place uh, as a buffer between. Uh, the entry and the main living spaces were their main concerns. Mm -hmm. um, I'll also add, um, having lived here now for almost 15 years with the two dormers, we've had um, our roof replaced, we've had the um, ice dams, and we have uh, have a rake, we've chopped ice down. What happens with the, the two dormers, it and we get the sun at the back of the house as opposed to the front. So it, it actually makes this flow and everything falls on the front steps and the front walk, making it icy, dangerous for the mailman, dangerous for us. So even though these other steps are exposed, um, Adam's design has this additional dormer and we're hoping that will take the snow dropping to the sides onto the landscaping and not onto the front of the steps. We're also keeping our tree. Our tree won't be impacted. And I actually think that will help with some of the snow as well. And we do keep our tree maintained and and uh, trimmed. And I think we we have very overgrown bushes that we're going <laughs> to replace with something that hopefully will be a little more attractive. So I actually think the design with the third peaked roof is going to actually help with some of that ice and and Hopefully we won't have to snow rake the roof as much. Oh, great. Let's look and see if there's if one of these plans had that description. The tree is here, um, but it's not on the plan. But are there questions from the board for the applicant? Not see any. Um, 
with that. Um, go back. So I'm now going to open the meeting for public comment. Public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing the decision. Uh, members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application, and those calling by phone may dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. Are there members of the public who wish to address this hearing? Once going twice. Seeing none, go ahead and close the public comment period this evening. Um, so the, the matter before the board, um, this a request for an enclosed entrance exceeding 25 square feet and then farther than 3.5 feet from the uh, foundation line of the building, which the board may approve using the special permit criteria um, under section uh, 539A. Um, I will quickly share, we do have um, from the Department of Planning and Community Development, they issued a their uh, review today um, of the application and they've reviewed the, the seven criteria that we had listed uh, for the prior hearing. Um, the, the, the requested use is permitted in the R1 zoning district to the granting of a special permit, uh, would improve the convenience and safety of the owner's entrance to their home, would not be an increase to traffic, would not an undue burden on municipal systems, um, would not result in the need for any special regulations. The special regulation is the section 539. Um, while the, in regards to the integrity and character of the district, uh, I do note that uh, this is a common feature in the area. Uh, many homes have enclosed entries. Uh, and the proposed front yard setback would be similar to several other properties on Appleton Street. And it consistent with the residential design guidelines, it will introduce a human scaled architectural variation to the overall streetscape and visual interest would not be detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and it would not cause an, any detrimental excess of use and includes the site photo um, at the front of the house with the tree. Um, and the Department of Planning and Community Development maintains the proposal is consistent with special permit criteria in the zoning bylaw. Uh, Mr. Chair, could I make a request? Mr. Glassman, yes. I, I know this would be unusual, but would you mind um, assuming the, the board will vote to approve the plans as drawn? Could we make one change? And that would be that the, the landing, the proposed landing is three feet deep. Could we could we call it between three and four feet deep? It wouldn't make any change to the open space or it wouldn't impact the uh, proximity of the, the front of the, you know, the enclosed addition to the, the sidewalk. I just, I'd hate for them to wish they had this a little deeper and your point was a good one. So let's see, do we have the, looking for the, the right plan to reference here. Um, here we go. So that that three feet is just cutting it so close that you know I think four four making it four feet wouldn't you know would be such an insignificant difference as far as the application goes, but it would probably mean a lot to them at the end of the day. Okay, so um, were the board to vote to approve, uh, we would have the standard three conditions, which we've already read into the record this evening. Um, and at the request of the applicant, um, through the applicant's uh, architect, would propose a fourth, um, which would read uh, the depth of the land of the landing in front of the entry door is not to exceed four feet. And so that would give you some leeway in, in how deep that is. Um, Thank you. Are there, 
You're welcome. Are there any questions from the board in regards to that or any of the other? Um, Mr. Chair. Traditions? Mr. Riccardelli. Um, just on, on that on that last bit, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the setback would actually be to the, the setback that we're looking to um, allow would actually be to the face of the new building, right? Not to the exterior stair. So um, would we be even required to include that language because it's not really in our purview here? Um, so under 539, we're granting, and Mr. Vellarelli, correct me if I'm wrong, um, under 539, we are approving the enclosure, the enclosed area here, at the enclosed entrance under 539A, um, but the steps, um, do the steps need a separate approval, Mr. Valarelli, under 539B? Sorry, I was on mute. Interesting question. So open stairs in the front yard can extend up to 10 feet into the front yard from the face of the foundation. Um, in special services, if, if, if the board approved this uh, projection mudroom, yeah. the special services would, would allow the stairs to be built um, as proposed, including the increase in the uh, mm -hmm. depth of the uh, landing. Okay. So I think if the board uh, just focuses on the projections, uh, the stairs would not be an issue. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I, th I think that in light of what Mr. Valarelli says, it still is important to include the language that the chair has suggested because otherwise you would arrive at a, at a potential uh, contradiction. The, the first, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the first standard condition requires compliance with the plans that are approved by the board and the only plans that we have if we don't say anything in line with what the applicant has requested would show them not being four feet out so just as a matter of getting everything papered over correctly we would we would still need to have something that recognizes that a deviation from the plan that we have before us would be allowed okay <clears throat> and then I'm also considering a, a fifth um, condition, which is one that um, we have we've in, we used to include in the past on porches, but um, because the bylaw was changed, we don't need to include it with porches anymore. But because this is an enclosed structure and it's going on the front of the house, I want to be clear that the approval of a of the enclosed entrance does not constitute a moving of the foundation wall of the house. The foundation wall of the house remains at the front wall of the house as it is today. Um, and what that would do is it just means that if the applicant was to consider, you know, building to the sides of the um, enclosed entrance, they would have to come back before the board for something like that. They couldn't do that by right. Not <clears throat> change the existing location of the foundation wall. Oops. So we have the, the three standard conditions. We have a condition number four, which is that the depth of the open stair landing in front of the entry door is not to exceed four foot zero inches. And then a fifth that the approval of the enclosed entrance does not change the existing location of the foundation wall of the house. 
It's just, a, I, I know that it's being constructed open underneath, but I just want to put that in as a confirmation. Are there any further questions for the board or conditions that they feel would be appropriate for this possible grant? Seeing none, um, may I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, I move approval of the application subject to the three standard conditions plus the two additional conditions that the chair has just read into the record. Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So this is a motion of the Zoning Board of Appeals to approve a special permit for 320 Appleton Street with five total conditions as motioned by Mr. Hamlin <clears throat> and seconded by Mr. DuPont. Um, are there any questions from the board on what we are voting on? Seeing none, uh, roll call vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? <clears throat> Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The uh, motion to approve the special permit for 320 Appleton Street with the five conditions is passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. You. Good night. Good night. Good night. So for the, coming back to the board, um, we have two hearings that are currently scheduled. Um, one is Monday, December 19th, uh, which is the re return of the comprehensive permit application for 1021-1025 Mass Ave. Um, there has uh, been a, a lot of work going on on the town side to uh, get consultants hired and in place. Um, in talking with the town this week, it looks like that is uh, now, now coming finally into place. Um, and so hopefully we will uh, be able to make some progress on the 19th. And then Tuesday, the 20th at 7.30, um, we have two hearings on our normal day. Uh, one is the continuation of 39 Woodside Lane. Um, uh, to as we recall, this was this has been um, continued a couple times, um, most recently because of the uh, discovery of an easement on the property that was not previously disclosed. So the the applicant has been reworking on the application, um, and as soon as that information is presented to the board, we will uh, put that out um, to everyone. And then the second is a new hearing for Twenty One Old Spring Street. Um, and Mr. Valerelli sent that out to the board recently, um, so you should have that in front of you. I believe that's a variance application for uh, for Old Spring Street. Um, and then just sort of a last uh, piece uh, we had discussed a while back when we were talking about the um, possibly moving to a hybrid meeting format that we would want to, before we dove in, we would want to have some kind of a uh, a dry run session at some point, um, possibly in December. Um, I will say I have done absolutely nothing in that regard <laughs> up to this point. Um, and I, I would recommend that we can, um, uh, offline, we can uh, try to find a date that works, but we would probably do that. At this point, we would do it in January um, yeah. as things get awfully full this time of year anyway. So. Right. I will I will contact the, the members of the board um, trying to come up with a date. So that would be great. Um, I believe that is all the business we have before ourselves tonight. So I thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I'd especially like to thank Rick Valarelli, Vincent Lee, Kelly Linema, and Marissa Lau for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. And to echo the sentiment that um, Mr. Hanlon presented earlier, to especially thank uh, Rick for all his assistance um, making our way through the zoning bylaw this evening on our, our cases is very much appreciated. Please note that the purpose of the board's recording in this meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of our proceedings. It's our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Thank you.
So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everyone. Hey, thanks, guys. Good night. Thanks, Good night, everyone. Everyone.